Hi friends, Jim Alfredson, and here are my five favorite features of the Kurzweil K2700. Number one is quick access. Quick access is a way to set your favorite sounds in order so that you can move from one to the next extremely easily for creating set lists and the like. It's very easy to access. The first thing we do is press the soft button for view. And now we see our quick access bank right here at the bottom. And now we can choose with the number pad, which patch we want to use. So it works out great. Now, if we want to assign a sound to a quick access slot, it's extremely easy. Let's find a sound. Let's use, oh, it could be anything. How about Beck's Retro EP here? This is a great Wurlitzer electric piano sound. So let's say we want to save this sound to quick access slot three. All we do is hold down the three number button and it says quick access saved. And now there it is. Here's button two, button one, button three. It's that simple. Changing banks, we use our channel layer zone track up and down buttons right here to the left of the screen. And there are 50 quick access banks, each containing 10 slots. So tons of space to set up set lists for all your gigs. And of course, it can be any sound you want in a quick access slot. It can be a program, which is a single sound, or it can be a multi, which is up to 16 sounds split and layered across the keyboard. Extremely powerful feature, extremely easy to use, and it's a lifesaver for me when I play with all these different bands. I set up my set lists and I just make a note of which quick access bank it is and just go there really quickly. Another cool feature of the K2700 is the quick access bank button, which when we press that, we can type in exactly which quick access bank we want to go to, say 42, press enter. Now we're in bank 42. Simple as that. Again, QA bank, let's go to bank two, press enter, boom, now we're in quick access bank two. So we don't actually have to scroll through them using these. We can if we want, but we can also just type it directly in. So that's a great feature. My second favorite feature of the K2700 is the ease of creating splits and layers. Right here we see the soft buttons two and four are split and layer. It's that simple. We just press a button, split. Now we automatically have a bass sound in my left hand, my piano in my right hand. And if we want to change that sound, the cursor is already on the lower sound and we can just go through and change it. We can put a string ensemble there if we want. And we can change the split point by just navigating over to the top note of the split and simply changing it with the scroll wheel. That's how we create a split. Let's cancel that. To create a layer, it's the same thing. We press the layer button. Now we have a nice string. And what's great, it just automatically sets up the first two sliders to control the volume of those sounds. So the first slider is my electric piano. Second slider is the strings. So we can just balance it just like that. Very simple. If we want to save that, we can save it as a new multi and then keep editing it and do what we want with it. But just creating a split or a layer is as simple as pressing a button and it's so fast and so easy. It's one of my favorite features. My third favorite feature is quick entry. We've already talked about quick access. Quick entry is a way of assigning certain things to parameters very quickly. Now, let me show you what I mean. We just did a split. Remember, 
Press the split button. We have our bass down here. I'll let your piano up here. Now, if we want to change the split point, I showed you that we can just navigate over using our arrow buttons to the top of the lower layer here, and we can use the wheel to change it. But we can also use quick entry. So what that entails is holding down enter and pressing the note that we want to be the upper range. And it automatically changed. Likewise, we can change our lower range for our electric piano by pressing enter and pressing the button. Now we have a new split point. Instead of down here, it's up here. But quick entry can be used for a lot of other parameters too. For example, we have this lead sound here. And the vibrato is assigned to aftertouch, which is great. But what if I want to assign it to the mod wheel? Which it is not right now. Turn the mod wheel up, no vibrato. It's extremely easy to do with the quick entry function. All we do is go into our edit, go to parameters, which we're already on, go and find the vibrato, which is right there. And you can see it's assigned to none right now. If we want to assign it to mod wheel, press and hold enter and touch the mod wheel, move it up and down, and all of a sudden, it's assigned to mod wheel. It's as simple as that. It's another easy way to assign sliders to different functions. Let's say we want to pan the sound left and right, and we want to assign that to a slider. Let's say we want to assign it to slider, oh, six, right here. We just navigate to panning, which is right here. Right now, it's assigned to MIDI 10 and press and hold enter and use our slider six. And now we're changing the panning with the slider. So quick entry works for so many different parameters to be able to easily find and assign modulation sources, destinations, notes in our range of our splits and layers. It's, it's a time saver and a lifesaver. The fourth feature I'd like to talk about is the audio interface. The Kurzweil K2700 has a full featured two analog input USB class compliant audio interface built in. Now this can be used to either put another keyboard into the Kurzweil so you can save um, mixer outputs or mixer inputs rather in your live show. So right now I have this great IK Multimedia Uno Synth Pro connected to the inputs of the Kurzweil. So that's running into the Kurzweil right now through these inputs and then it comes out the Kurzweil's outputs. There's two gain knobs right here you can set and you can actually set these to be high Z as well. If you want to plug in a guitar, you can actually do that and play your guitar through the Kurzweil. Now the cool thing about this is we can not only record via USB, we can connect the Kurzweil K2700 up to a computer and record the audio inputs and the Kurzweil on their own separate channels. That's cool enough. And you can actually play back things from the computer through the Kurzweil as well. So if you wanted to connect your laptop and through USB and actually play backing tracks and have them come out the outputs of the Kurzweil, you can do that. It's just like a regular audio interface. The great thing though is that we can actually process the signals that are coming in through the Kurzweil's effects engine. Now, if you're playing guitar, I'm not a guitar player, so I can't demonstrate this. I wish I could, but I can demonstrate it with the keyboard. It's the same essential basic function. It's just a keyboard instead of a guitar. With a guitar, you'd want to press the high Z button because it treats the input as a, as a guitar input, like a pickup input for a guitar, like an amp, amplifier input. Only input one can be high Z. And we also have phantom power if you want to connect a microphone. So you could actually use this as a microphone preamp. And again, that would come out the outputs of the Kurzweil. And we can assign what outputs we want to put it through too, because remember the Kurzweil has stereo A outputs and stereo B outputs. You can already see that the possibilities are, are pretty amazing here. But as I said before, we can process the audio that's coming into the Kurzweil through the Kurzweil's effects engine. So right now, our little Uno Synth Pro, I took all the effects off so it doesn't have any out. It's just dry. What we want to do is go into our global and we want to scroll over to audio IO. And right here we have analog level in, we've got stereo or mono, so we could actually take it in, in, on, in mono. 
it, which sounds the same because there's no effects on it. And we have a gate, so if you have kind of a noisy pickup on your guitar, you can gate it, which is great. And here we go, analog in effects. Right now it's set to no. If we turn that on, yes. Now we can choose what effects chain we want to use. Check this out. So that's the effects of the Kurzweil, not the effects of the Uno. That's the effects of the Kurzweil. We can assign real-time control to it. So we could assign the faders to control like the delay level or the delay time or anything like that. Effects in the Kurzweil are absolutely amazing. You have your phasers and flangers and Leslie effects and distortion effects and EQs and compressors and delays and reverbs. Basically any effect you can think of, it's already in here. And you can set those up and uh, create your own effects chains. Let's try another one. Let's try this. Uh... Ooh, that's kind of cool. It's like a chorus and a delay. So we could do something like a... So how great is that? Not only do I not have to use an extra pair of inputs into my mixer, all I have to use is two outputs from the Kurzweil, but I can process the sounds through the Kurzweil's incredible effects engine as well. So full featured USB class compliant audio interface with two inputs, multiple outputs. And the great thing too is that when we get into the multis, which we'll probably do in the next video, I could actually control this keyboard from here, either via MIDI or USB, and I can create layers and splits that only affect this keyboard. It's so powerful. The master controller functions are a whole nother thing. We'll get into that in the next video because this is only five features right now. But uh, I just wanted to talk about that audio interface because the, the things you can do with it, processing your vocal, processing your guitar, processing another keyboard, it's just amazing. The fifth and final favorite feature of the new K2700 that I'd like to talk about is chord and key triggering. I play in a Pink Floyd cover band and I'm doing all the keyboard parts by myself and I'm also singing lead a lot of the time. It's called Echoes of Pink Floyd if you want to check it out. And I use the key mapping and the chord mapping feature all the time because it saves me trying to play 13 different parts at once. <laughs> <laughs> so the way it works is really, really, really great. So say we set up a real quick multi. That's beautiful, isn't it? Roads and a pad sound. Okay, let's start with this. So we go into edit, and you can see I've got two layers. I've got the roads on layer one, again, automatically assigned to these sliders here, and I've got a four pole pad assigned to layer two. So there's just the roads, there's just the pad. Now let's say I don't want that pad on every single note of the roads. Let's say, for example, that I want it on an F minor chord like this, okay? But when I go to, say, B flat minor, I don't want the pad there. Well, how can I do that? Well, I could reach over real quickly and turn it down when I play that chord, but that's going to require another movement of my hands, and I might be playing another part with my other hand and I don't have time to do that um, or even the hands to do that. I'd need three hands to do that. So the other way we can do it is with chord and key mapping. We can basically create a chord from the pad sound and assign it to one of the notes that I'm already playing. So the first thing we do is go to our four pole pad and we go into the control submenu by pressing this button here. And then we use our main wheel and we select we just go up and up and up until we get to key one now there's 12 of these this means you can assign up to 12 different key triggers on any key on the keyboard okay so we're going to use key one we're going to navigate down we're going to turn it on to notes and chord and then we're going to choose 
the key that we want to play that will trigger the chord. And it can be any note we want. It doesn't even have to be harmonically related to the chord. It can be anything. In this case, I think what I'm going to do is use this F right here to trigger the chord. So again, we use our quick entry, remember? Press enter, press the key, it's assigned. Now the next parameter, it says do both. So what that means is it can play the note and switch the chord, or it can just switch the chord. This is handy if you're using a non-harmonic note to actually switch the chord. So for example, if I wanted to switch the chord with an F sharp, even though I'm playing an F minor chord, I would only want it to switch. I wouldn't actually want to hear that F sharp because that would create a nasty dissonance, right? But in this case, I do want the note in the chord. So I'm going to leave it on both. And then we scroll down and we you can see we have eight keys that we can assign. So we can assign eight separate notes to this one key trigger, which is on F3. The first note that we're going to assign using our quick entry, press it, hold enter and press the note is G sharp. The next is C. The next is D sharp. And the next is F. See what happened there? I press one key and I get the note. Now we want to change the range of our pad sound because what you can hear we're still getting the pad on the other notes and we don't want that. So now we need to go back into our overview and we need to change the range of our pad sound. And we can change it to just this note, F3. Press and hold enter, F3 on both the lower and upper. Now it only triggers on this note, watch this. No pad, no pad, but there it is on that note. triggering because I keep playing it. And that's the thing that you kind of have to figure out. Maybe it would be better actually to put it on the G sharp because the G sharp, or maybe even the C because the C isn't in my, that, that might be better. The C isn't in my B flat, my B flat minor chord. I keep going between sharps and flats. Sorry. It's just how my brain works. We can call this A sharp if you want, A sharp minor. So there's no C in that chord. So maybe we should trigger it from the C instead of the F. Just go back into our controls, go back up to the key trigger, press enter and hold, assign it to C. Now it's triggering on C. The same notes are triggering on that, on this note. Oh, I got confused. Why is it triggering on this? Because we need to go back to our overview and switch which note is active. We want it to be C, C. Now it's not triggering on here. You can see you kind of have to plan this out uh, in your head beforehand. Like what note do I want to trigger this chord versus what note am I playing at the moment? What note am I not going to play the next chord? This is just an example, but this is one of the ways that I use it to free up my hands um, playing like four or five different parts. So again, we have it triggering from C4, it's triggering an F minor, seventh chord. And then when we go to our A sharp minor, it's not there. So check it out. So you can see how powerful the key triggering is. Again, you can assign any note on the keyboard to trigger up to eight different notes, and you can have 12 of those triggers spread across the keyboard, spread into your different layers of your multis. It's an extremely powerful system to free up your hands to do other things, especially if you're playing lots of different parts like I do with some of these bands that I play with. And finally, I know that I said it was only five features in this video, but I just have to mention a bonus feature, and it's not really a bonus feature. It's the whole point of the instrument. This instrument sounds amazing. The, new York, the electric pianos, the piano sounds, the strings, the synthesis, it has a virtual analog engine in it. 
it doesn't matter how great the interface of any instrument is. If it doesn't sound good, why would you use it, right? This thing could make my coffee and walk my dog for me, but if it doesn't sound good, I'm not going to use it. And the Kurzweil K2700 sounds absolutely beautiful. We got over 4.5 gigabytes of factory samples, over 1,500 presets in this thing, 3.5 gigabytes of your own sample memory, so you can load in your own sounds and samples and sound effects and whatever you want to do. 256 note polyphony, so when you start making those multis and those splits and those layers, you're not going to run out of horsepower. This thing is just a beast. And it's the perfect board for a guy like me that's playing in cover bands and playing original music that needs a whole bunch of sounds in one package. The string sounds, of course, Kurzweil's always been known for the great string sounds and orchestral sounds. A virtual analog engine that just kicks butt. Uh, FM engine, you can load DX7 sounds into this, original DX7 sounds, and they load up just fine. And then, of course, you can process them through the, the effects of the Kurzweil, which are second to none. Drum samples. The pianos are, of course, gorgeous, the electric pianos. If you haven't checked it out already, check out my other video where I go through the sounds of this thing, and there's no talking, it's just me playing a bunch of sounds and a little demo. I think you'll dig it, and you can actually hear how good this thing sounds. It's absolutely incredible. The Kurzweil K2700, check it out. Mm -hmm.